I guess every time I'm working on anything, I come up with maybe a unique style for it. So in this case, I've I've gone with um, like I, I had the idea like basically I'll use kind of like 1930s architecture. Um, you know, I just looked at like interiors from like the 30s and like 40s and and stuff and i found like they're just kind of sad and depressing and like you know but they but they have like these kind of fun like art deco flares like that was big and so that's kind of what these lamps are um you know i figured you know when i was when i was styling the library as it was described in the short story there, there was not much detail normally when i would see people make a library of Babel, um they would use like like kind of like, you know, more fantasy, um, like castle walls, you know, you know, dungeon looking place, you know, and like the, you know, the like brick, you know, s you know, and stone and, you know, maybe like a, a magic looking thing. Cause they're, they describe the lamp in the story as like, like a, a fruit that is, you know, oh. that, that illuminates the room with a dim light. Mm -hmm. So I made like an art deco looking lamp that was like, you know, a, a spherical looking fruit, you know, and, and uh, illuminates the room with that. Um, and yeah, and I just used like, you know, this like kind of grungy metal railing um, to encircle the ventilation shafts. And I used like this, this like, you know, metal, you know, panels because I, you know, I, I saw a lot of that kind of stuff in like the the 30s. Like they would do, you know, when you're when you're in like an in, like a more industrial-ish building, you know, you just have this like, and I and I even saw libraries that were set up like this, where that you'd go back into like the archives of the library, and everything is just like you know metal railings and metal graded walkways and stuff like that, and so you know the shafts are like you know built like that, and then you know the the flooring is just wood, you know, the materials are just like a like a plaster you know wall um and i felt like that made a, a just a, a a different feeling than you would normally get in most other people's you know renditions of the library um you know it's like you're going to grandma's house and uh you know everything is just kind of a little bit older uh, <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and it, it's period accurate to like yeah. what uh the author would have would have been like uh and the exterior of the, the library, um, what, you know, before you enter, the that that building is uh, modeled after the uh, library that the author of the short story worked in when he wrote the short story, and he hated that place. And I used it because of that. Like I used it anyway. Like yeah. <laughs> it's just kind of a yeah. Like he hated working there, and he wrote the short story about you know, an infinite library universe while he was stuck working as a cataloger there for like 10 years mm -hmm. and, and he didn't like working there. And uh, I felt like that would be an appropriate, you know, fitting right. entrance to the yeah, library of Babel. You can see the rooms load in and out. You can watch the rooms. Uh, uh, okay. Progressively be eaten and, dest and, and destroyed Destroy. and then placed in the, in the distance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'll watch a chain, basically. I call it the Langoliers. The Langoliers are eating chains of rooms that can no longer be seen and producing new chains of rooms where they should be seen. Yeah, it's just trying to fly around. What are you, <laughs> what are you talking about? Let me see this. Yeah. There's, yeah, it's recording that, yeah. <laughs> so I see some of the other rooms. Mm. That, uh, like some of the normal rooms and then the, the purple rooms. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, it's pretty cool when you see the the chains of them. It's like uh -huh. debugging when things go wrong is crazy because I'm like, uh, what happened? Right. Because it's such a like debugging this algorithm was was insane. So I try not to change it. Like, but I did change it randomly before we. Like, actually, I changed it after I released it to make it so you could fall infinitely without any glitches. Uh -huh. it used to be, you'd lag out if you looked up when you were falling because it didn't eat the rooms behind you faster oh. than it placed rooms below you. I had I had added a a special mode for when you're falling basically to place rooms in front of you and prioritize that but I never quite had it working to eat rooms behind you uh -huh. but yeah I upgraded the algorithm to do that and it just worked so I was like okay I guess I'm like crazy at coding <laughs> yeah that's fun I like this didn't have any bugs in it <laughs> like it just worked I should have I should have 
flown earlier, so I could, you know, it, it's easier to like grasp the concept of mm. it once you once you see it. And stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, it is a bit of secret magic though. Like I like to, I like to tell people to avoid sticking their head through the wall or camera until they've had a good, good yeah, chance yeah. to play with the the world. You know, that way it doesn't spoil the magic. Exactly.